What is going on guys, my name is John, and welcome back to yet another video. Among all the neat introductions to Generation 2, some features of the game were replaced or removed in order to accommodate for the small space that was available on the original Game Boy cartridges. One notable feature in the game that was removed was the Safari Zone, which was partially replaced with the Bug Catching Contest. It's a pretty simple concept, but what does it take to complete everything that it has to offer? Today we're going to find out how easily you can complete the Bug Catching Contest in the Pokemon series. Now your initial thought is probably, that doesn't really seem too difficult. So what's the big deal behind this one? When I say that we're going to complete the bug catching contest, I mean that we're going to have to take on everything the game mode has to offer. This means that in typical Johnstone fashion, we're going to have to catch every Pokemon, but we're also going to have to win the contests, which is surprisingly a lot harder than you'd initially expect. Before we jump into the video, we do have to talk about our video sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Now if you've been active on my channel for a while, you'd know that I sponsored this game a while back, and this is basically a follow up to the previous one. If you've been living under a rock, Raid Shadow Legends is a free to play turn based RPG that's available on iOS and Android devices. Just like Pokemon, you can take control of over 400 different champions, which is a lot more options than some other games. No? Alright. Although there is a main campaign that you can play, there are a ton of different modes available like PvP, dungeons, factions, and clan battles for you to try out. If you go in the video description and click on the first link, you can get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of their new player program. You can use that silver to upgrade your existing characters, or you can use them to summon new ones. This game was nominated on the Google Play Store as one of the best mobile games of 2019, which means that they got this neat badge, which is very epic. Once again, if you're interested in checking this out, you can download Raid for free on iOS and Android devices and get some cool benefits with the links below. I want to thank Raid for sponsoring this video, and with that out of the way, let's just hop right into it. All ads aside, our first look at the bug catching contest is going to be all the way back on the Game Boy with Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal. This event takes place within the National Park, which is relatively early in the game considering that you really only need two badges to participate. Outside of the bug catching contest, the National Park offers basically nothing to do, which is kind of sad considering how this one area of the game is larger than most of the main cities that are available in this game. I know that Gold and Silver had to be completely reworked to only barely fit on the cartridge, but fortunately they actually updated the area in Crystal. They decided to add a little water bubble to the middle of the fountain, and whatever this thing is. Must have been important? All the Pokemon that are native to the National Park are not only weak, but they're available on multiple different routes. So if you couldn't tell by now, the only thing that makes this place worthwhile is the bug catching contest. If you want to enter to play, all you have to do is go into the little gateway that's at the top of Route 35. If it's a Tuesday, Thursday, or Saturday, there should be a man by the door who will get you set up for the contest. The concept for the bug catching contest is extremely simple. Catch the strongest Pokemon that you possibly can. Sounds easy enough. Once you've registered, you can enter the National Park and roam around as much as you'd like to get one of the Pokemon that you think would come in first place. Just like any of the Safari games, we're given Park Balls, which have the same catch rate as any Great Ball that you'd normally throw. The main differences that you'll notice is that you can use your Pokemon in battle, and that there's also a 20 minute time limit, rather than a step limit before the expedition is over. When it comes to catching all the Pokemon that are available, it's a pretty simple thing to do. In total, there are only 10 Pokemon available, and a majority of them are within the same evolution line. Caterpie, Metapod, Butterfree, Weedle, Kakuna, Beedrill, Venonat, Paris, Scyther, and Pinsir are the list of options. And all but the last two Pokemon are available in a bunch of other places in Kanto and Johto. So these two are realistically the only Pokemon you'll ever want to catch. To most of you, this seems like an open shut kind of deal. How in the world could this competition be any sort of difficult? Unfortunately, it's a combination of a lot of reasons. The first issue relates to the coding of the game, which shouldn't really come as a surprise if you looked into how this game was made. Like I mentioned earlier, the goal of the bug catching contest is that you have to catch the strongest Pokemon out of anyone in the contest. But what does that exactly mean? It partially sounds like you have to catch whatever Pokemon can deal the most damage, but the game actually adds up all the stats for the Pokemon that you've caught and if your stat total is higher than everyone else's, you win the competition. This seems like it'd be pretty easy to manage, but there is one stat that they didn't properly account for. The Pokemon's health. If you look at the roster of Pokemon that are available in this area, it's no doubt that there are some pretty difficult Pokemon to catch, especially if you only have access to Great Balls. 
Because of this, it would make sense to do anything in your power to make them the easiest to catch, right? Using false swipe to bring its health under the red, sleep moves, the whole works. The issue with this is that if you catch a Pokemon after it's been damaged, the game accounts for its current health rather than the total health that it can have. In most cases, HP is the highest value in your stats, which means that if you have it at 1 HP, you're basically guaranteed to come in dead last throughout every single contest that you do. This is probably one of the worst oversights in the franchise, and that's solely because they tell you and put out the incentive that you should use your Pokemon to your advantage to win, when in reality, it's literally the worst thing you can do in the contest. When you combine this with the fact that you only get 20 Park Balls to throw, you might finish the contest with nothing anyways if you try and go for the big value Pokemon like Scyther. Now if you think that's bad, let me introduce you to this man, Cool Trainer Nick. Within the Generation 2 games, Game Freak wanted to make this game mode a little more challenging, and I'd be lying if they didn't do exactly that. Although it seems like the characters in the overworld are just there to make the scenery a little more lively, these NPCs are actually coded to catch a specific set of Pokemon, so when the final results are polled, the results are different almost every time that you play. If you head to the west side of the fountain during a contest, there's a good chance that you'll see this blue-haired guy, who happens to be Cool Trainer Nick. Now although the other trainers have a chance to catch a strong Pokemon, Nick is coded to catch one every single time. This means that if he's participating, you're probably going to lose every time. Statistically, the best Pokemon you can catch is a level 14 Scyther, and coincidentally, that is one of the Pokemon that he can also obtain. This means that even if you both get the same Pokemon, the winner is solely based off of whatever Pokemon has higher DVs. But this is only one of the three Pokemon you can catch. The other two are a level 17 Butterfree and a level 15 Pinsir. This doesn't seem like too big of a deal, except for the fact that these Pokemon aren't obtainable within the contest. No matter how many encounters that you run through, the highest level Butterfree that you can find is 15, and Pinsir is only at level 14. This means that if he's given one of these Pokemon, you are guaranteed to lose, unless you get a Scyther that has absurdly high stats. I guess the strongest bug in the contest isn't actually one of the Pokemon, huh? Okay, I'm sorry, I'll go. The chance for that to happen is obviously ridiculously low, and when you can only participate three times a week, your odds of winning aren't very good. Now that we know all this, what's the best way to go about completing this? Although we can't really do anything about the catching issue, thankfully Cool Trainer Nick has a chance to not appear in the contest. Because the trainers are generated once you talk to the guard at the gate, you can just save in front of him and then reset every time you check the fountain and see if Nick is still standing there. I'm not exactly sure what the odds are for him to not appear, but it should realistically take you only about 4 or 5 tries before you can have a fair chance. Even then, you still have a chance to lose to some wild catch, but thankfully there's a guy that can help you find out what your chances are of winning. A Reddit user by the name Chamel created a guide to help you increase your chances. If you recognize the name, this is also the same person who originally came up with the Professor Oak challenge. Which if you haven't seen that, it's super interesting, and you can check that out in the top right of your screen to learn more. Statistically, your best option is a level 14 Scyther, like I mentioned before, which gives you roughly an 82% chance to win if Cool Trainer Nick isn't there, with Pinsir being the second best option for only 1% less. Although there are other options, you should really only focus on trying to catch one of these. It's important to remember that you have a full 20 minutes to find your best bug, so that should be plenty of time considering that Scyther and Pinsir have a 5% encounter rate for each. Once you get through the tedious process of trying to land an 8% catch rate, You'll be taken back inside and then a winner will be selected. Although you can get an Everstone and a Gold Berry for coming in 2nd and 3rd place, the 1st place prize is obviously the most coveted item out of the bunch. A Sunstone. This is the only place in the entire game that you can get one, so if you ever want to make your Sun Kern not faint in one hit, you're going to need to win this contest. Thankfully it only took a few tries for me to get one, but there's still one more game that we have to take on. The Remakes. Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver returned with the bug catching contest, and just like Crystal, they revamped the whole place to really take advantage of those Gen 4 graphics. They added a whole water fountain right at the entrance. But they got rid of that little thing next to the bench. That's better. For the most part, the aspect of the original bug catching contest was kept intact, however they did add a lot more incentives to play it on every day that it's available. If you've played this version, you know that your odds of winning are drastically easier because Cool Trainer Nick isn't around anymore. But it will say that this camper right here also has blue hair, so don't be surprised if he somehow catches a Giratina during the contest. When it comes to catching Pokemon, the encounters now change depending on how far you are in the game, as well as what day you try to play. If you haven't completed the game yet, you're going to only encounter the same Pokemon that were available in Gold, Silver, and Crystal. But there are a bunch of new faces available once you get hold of the National decks. 
On Tuesdays, you still have the same Pokemon, but now they're catchable in the level 20s and 30s. Thursdays and Saturdays will still have the same Scyther and Pinsir, but the other eight are a nice mix of Hoenn and Sinnoh bug Pokemon. Wurmple, Silcoon, Cascoon, Beautyfly, Dustox, Ninkata, Volbeat, Illumise, Cricketot, Cricketune, and Combi are all available, but some of them are swapped depending on the day that you play. In addition to all this, the stat total bug was fixed too. I'm honestly not sure if they genuinely knew about it and then fixed it, or they just recoded it from scratch and it didn't even cross their minds. But overall, you have an extremely good chance if you catch the very rare options. When it comes to prizes, they definitely made it a lot more enticing to play, because now you can get any of the evolution stones if you come in first. But the obvious downside to that is that it's a completely random selection. This means you have a 1 in 9 chance of getting that one that you actually want, but thankfully the stones are all available through other in-game methods. And with that, we've successfully completed all the bug catching contests in the Pokemon series. But how did I do? So let's review. Depending on your luck, completing everything in the bug catching contest can take either a day or an eternity depending on how much you know about the event. In total, it took me about 3 hours to catch every Pokemon and win the first place prize in gold and silver and it took me about the same amount in the sequels. The only reason for that is because there are over double the amount of Pokemon that are available in the previous games, and considering that you can only catch one per contest, that can take a pretty long time, especially with the low percentage encounters. I know this challenge wasn't necessarily as difficult as some of my other videos, but I still felt that it was a pretty cool challenge to talk about, considering that most people didn't even know how rigged this game can really be. If you're interested in trying this out for yourself, I've included some links in the description that you can check out. If you end up finding anything cool during your playthrough, tweet me your results at JohnstoneYT. Other than that, that's all there is to say about completing the bug catching contest in the Pokemon series. And that's gonna do it for today's video. If you liked the video, leave a like and consider subscribing, as I'll be making more videos like this very soon. If you have any other suggestions for videos that you'd like to see, leave a comment below. Follow me on Twitter to keep updated with new videos as they come out. Other than that, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.